It's the big break and it is the final. We just heard from our first finalist, Deviani Dial, our second finalist this evening, and that our only two is Arit Mohammed of Boone Coffee. Arit, thank you very much indeed for being with us. It's good to see you back in the studio. Thank you for having me. Listen, your task this evening that you were given just a couple of hours ago is this. Conduct a brief SWOT report on your own business strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and also threats. Our judges this evening, let's just recap. We have with us Edward Roderick of uh, Investors Mina, Eileen Wallace of the Portsmouth Group, Yusuf Takantakan of Flip Media. The first question on strengths goes to Edward Roderick. Would you, like, or would you just like to outline for us the top two or three strengths that you think you have in your business? Yes. Well, the number one strength I have is coffee is a proven product. I don't have to, it's not a new thing. So over two billion people wake up to the smell and uh, cup of coffee. So that, I, that's my strength. And being from Ethiopia, I'm also able to source the best quality of coffee. So I have a team not only in Dubai, I have a team in Ethiopia and I have access to farmers most people don't have. So that's a big strength for me. Eileen Wallace, weaknesses. All right, tell us what exactly is your concern about the gaps that you might have in the business at the moment? Well, my concern is there are a lot of uh, multinational, huge conglomerate coffee chains in Dubai from each corner of the world. I think Dubai has the most coffee chains, including from Australia, America, and all that. So me being a small uh, business, just starting based in Dubai, that based in the UAE, it's a weakness that I have to overcome. You know, I have to, I have to be able to educate and, you know, show that this is a different, different type of coffee, different product. So, but they're, they're sh- obviously, they have millions of dollars to advertise. So it has to be like, you know, word of mouth. I have to prove each of my steps. Yusuf Takan. Like you, like you said, Orit, you know, two, two billion people a day wake up and drink their coffee, and I'm sure consumers in the UAE are, are no exception to that rule. What do you see as the opportunities that, that face your business, and how do you plan to capitalize on them going forward? Well, UAE, in the last year alone, has increased the uh, uh, prod, uh, buying of coffee 11%, according to the European International Monitor. In, in the next from 2009 to 2014, 80% more than previous. So this is a huge market. And most people are, you know, distinguishing. They have, uh, they're now learning there's different taste. The, there is a big market for fair trade, organic. People are concentrating on this. They, they, want, they want something ethical. They want, where is it coming from? You know, more people are aware of all these issues. Being a global world now, people are not just wanting just one cup. They want to know where, where did it come from? How did it grow? How does it affect the environment? How does it affect the social uh, being of the world? So this is all. And finally, Edward, a mm-hmm. question on threats. When you wake up in the middle of the night sweating, what do you worry most about? Again, well, number one, I worry that I hope there are no natural disasters <laughs> happening where I'm producing I'm, I'm picking coffee, obviously. And second is that there are a lot of cheap coffee here, multi-sourced, you know, uh, from different places, cheaper uh, used fertilizers, and uh, that are not fair traded. So the prices, I can't compete with that kind of prices. Therefore, if I don't have the r- right platform, that I will always be a disadvantage, but you know, the taste will speak for itself. Ari, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for that SWAT report. Listen, to all our listeners, thank you so much. The SMSs are coming in already. Really appreciate them. We are going to go through them a little bit later. Keep them coming for 001. Right now, though, I'm going to throw this one open to our judges. It's a free for all. Ask any questions you like. Eileen Wallace. All right, you mentioned that you have to compete against the big boys who have big advertising budgets, big money in their pocket. How are you going to do that? How are you going to differentiate? Boone coffee from those larger brands? One is quality. Um, my brand, Boone Coffee, I'm in control. I'm doing it in small batches. So I have quality control from through sourcing it all the way to roasting it locally. And when the big boys, when they roast, you know, it's a multinational in another country, a huge batch, masses and masses. So they don't have control over quality. So that is a big advantage for me that, that I have to always work on to continuously. Yusuf to come to come. Well, one of the things you said, Orit, is obviously you don't have the you know the budgets or the marketing power to compete with the larger coffee chains in the country. But I would have thought that social media and digital marketing would be a natural fit for your brand, given that it appeals to a younger audience and maybe a slightly more progressive audience. But interestingly, I found that you've got a Twitter page with one tweet and zero followers. You've got 30 fans on Facebook um, and you're a fairly hard, hard company to find online. 
how do you you know how do you hope how do you hope to attract more people to your website this this is a new business and this exposure i did not expect you know at this at the stage of my business but we will be prepared and uh, that even though we have only one twitter and uh, one facebook uh, 30 facebook followers our product is speaking for itself already we already have clients word of mouth is working for us already so maybe we're lagging a little bit but with this opportunity right now we're going to move forward very fast edward Although you talk about the ethical elements of it and all the other bits and pieces, when it comes to buying coffee, do people actually care about those elements of things or is it purely product and price? No, no. now people do care. People want, uh, they don't want to have chemicals in their foods to, you know, if they could, if people are given a choice, they will always choose quality, fair and ethical items. So I will be the one who will provide that choice. And I think people will choose. And there is a bigger, big market now that people will choose the right thing. Yes, sir, Tikhan. Um, well, just, just thinking further ahead, like you said, you do have customers. You do have a word of mouth. How do you really plan to grow things going forward? Uh, I'm going to be, pl- this year alone, we're pr- uh, going to be in the Taste of Dubai and all the other local exhibitions that are going to be dealing with food or anything. And after that, we're going to be doing like sampling uh, the Dubai Marathon we're going to have sampling and so these kind of events th- will help me d- distinguish me from the other coffee chains five, five years down the line or where do you see the company things go well five Dubai will be based uh, the base of Boon Coffee but Boon Coffee will be exporting its coffee to this region and Asia and furthermore why not to the west we will be the base the on the basis that you grow as quickly as that and you become so global, do you have enough of a supplier base to actually meet that demand? Yes, actually, f- uh, Ethiopia is the third largest exporter of Arabica coffee. So if we, and being that we are so close to Ethiopia, if you look at, you know, across the Arabian Sea, that we will, I think, will have a great opportunity. But, but is all Ethiopian coffee grown ethically and, and grown in the way that you say it? So that will you be able to meet the, the demand and needs of that specialist product that you've got? Uh, most Ethiopian coffee, by tradition, is grown organically. So we, we, it's our company who decides how we're going to be ethical about fair trade and paying back and traceable. So that we will do. We're running short of time. A couple of final quick questions. If there were a natural disaster or, let's say, political uncertainty or challenges in Ethiopia, how would that affect the company? Would you go under? I don't think I would go under. Ethiopia is pretty stable for uh, right now. We have had a stable government. And uh, if it is natural disaster. We might have a slow year, one, one year. But, you know, it's the next year will pick up. One final question from our judges. You well, I, I, you know, I, I read a lot, you know, and, and I see quite often you know, a lot of advertising within the, the large coffee chains that, you know, they are fair trade. They are ethical. They are fair to their farmers. So, so why would I want to buy from you and not from them? They seem to be doing it in a fair and ethical way as well. Number one, the taste. <laughs> you would want to buy from me because I, not only am I fair and ethical, that I have a great product. You could taste the difference. I don't. I can talk about it all day, but you can taste the difference. M- the, my product sells itself, so that's why you. Choose. Arima Harry, thank you very much indeed. Arit's going to take a seat in the green room. When we come back, we have got more tasks for our contestants. They've been in a recording studio today. We're going to find out what kind of radio adverts they came up with. What are they going to do if they win the big break with all this radio advertising? What are they going to do with this great facility down at Dubai Airport Free Zone? We'll be putting them on the spot about these issues.